Hello everyone, my name is Joe Pizzini with RenderStream here in Austin, Texas. Today I'll be giving you a demo of our RenderStream SLI 2600K desktop. And I'll take you through some examples on how this system can benefit you in a production environment. Let's take a look at the specs of the system. The CPU is an i7-2600K 3.4GHz processor along with dual GTX 580 3GB GPUs, 16GB of main memory, and for storage, we're using dual 1.5 terabyte hard drives for data redundancy, along with a 20 gigabyte solid state cache, which boosts the overall performance. Okay, so let's take a look at the scene that we'll be working with today. As you can see, we'll be working with this old shack model using V-Ray and Phoenix FD to light it on fire. In the demo, I'll go over how you can use the power of your GPUs to iterate and refine your scenes much faster than using the CPU. Okay, so let's get started. Here's the old shack, and I'll pan around and show you what it looks like in the viewport. Ultimately, what we want to do is match this model with a background image and attempt to recreate the lighting seen in the background so that our model looks like it fits in the scene. As you can see, the background is simply just a JPEG image of an empty lot at sunset. The first thing I would do would be to create a light source. Now, just as a reminder, we're using V-Ray for this demonstration. So I'll go ahead and create a V-Ray sun and drag it into the scene. And we'll move it up into position. And the next thing we'll need is a camera. So I'll go ahead and create the V-Ray physical camera and drag that into the scene as well. The next thing I want to do is align our model to the background image. And here I'll just set the camera resolution to match the aspect ratio of the background. Now this isn't going to be a precise camera match. So what I'll do is just tell the viewport to display our background image. And from there we'll just eyeball the camera match and adjust it until it looks good. Something like this is what I'm after. Yep, that looks good enough for me. Now let me just add the V-Ray environment sky to our GI environment. And then we'll be ready to do some test renders. Okay, so we started our first render, and now we'll wait to see the results. In the past, this was typically how an artist would refine their scene, whereby you make a few changes, click render, and then wait for the results. And I'm sure many of you are aware that this can add considerable time to the completion of your shots, not to mention taking up valuable production time that could otherwise be used to produce a better product. In other words, the less time you spend watching those little buckets move around, the more time you have to work on the creative and aesthetic aspects of your work. Okay, so here we have our initial test rendering, and as you can see, we have a bit more work to do in order to match the lighting in our background image. But from now on, instead of using the CPU, let's switch over to the GPU in order to further iterate our scene. I'll go ahead and switch over to the Active Shade viewport and V-Ray RT. Initially, we have to wait just a moment in order for the files to transfer to the GPU. As you can see, we get a nice rendered preview very quickly right in the viewport. And for comparison, I'll bring up the previous CPU render and show you that they look identical to each other. So obviously, we don't need the CPU for test renderings anymore. Now that we have that set up, we can begin the process of matching our lighting to our background image.
Next thing I'll do is I'll move the V-Ray Sky to the Material Editor so that I can edit it. I'll enable Manual Sun Mode, and this will allow me to adjust the settings. With each parameter change, we'll get instant visual feedback in the viewport. I'll go ahead and play with some of those settings to show you what that feedback is like. It looks like the scene is a bit too washed out with light. I'd like to see more contrast overall and darker shadows. So what I can do is go in and adjust the sun intensity multiplier, and that should help me get the look I'm after. Yeah, that's starting to look better. I think we can go even lower though. Yeah, there we go. That's the contrast I was looking for. Now to give you an example of other ways you can refine the look of your scene, I'll go in and adjust the parameters of the camera. If we thought the scene was too dark, for example, we could go in and adjust the exposure levels. And again, you never have to wait to see the results of each modification. Let's go ahead and set the exposure back to what we had it before, and move on to adjusting our scene lighting. If we take a look at our background image, we'll see that the time of day is around dusk and the sun is rather low in the sky. We want to go ahead and position the sun so that it's roughly in the area where the building and the tree meet, right about here. This is fairly easy to do, we just need to move the sun over to that location. And we'll move it down a bit, closer to the horizon. We can start to see the sun show up in the camera view in the bottom left. And it looks like we're almost there, just a few more adjustments. I'd like to position the sun to the point where the direct light shadows just about disappear. Something like this should do it. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So we now have the lighting set up how we want it, and we know from earlier that the GPU output is basically identical to the CPU. So if we wanted, we could send this out for final rendering and be confident that everything will look right. Now let's take a look at some other ways this system can help speed things along in production. As you saw earlier, we're going to light this shack on fire using a plugin called Phoenix FD by Chaos Group Software. So in this scene here, I've already calculated the simulation for the fire and smoke. In the past, the only way you had to gauge the results of the simulation were the voxels in the viewport. And as you can see, displaying these voxels in the viewport is quite a drag on our system's resources, as we're only getting about 2.7 frames per second. And overall, the computer's performance is rather sluggish when displaying the voxels. Of course, the other method to get an idea of what the simulation would look like would be to render it. I'll render this out using low draft quality render settings. Now, I don't think I need to let this finish in order for you to get the idea, but in the end, it'll take several minutes to get any sort of meaningful visual feedback. So once again, there's an easier way, and it involves using our GPUs. I'll go ahead and, and disable the voxels here. And then I'll go up and enable the Phoenix FD GPU preview. As you can see, it doesn't take long to load at all, and we get a much better idea of what the simulation looks like when rendered. Additionally, you can pan and zoom around the fire and smoke to get a better idea of what it looks like from any angle. One thing I want to point out is that the GPU preview tool doesn't appear to support multiple GPUs. When running the tool, I've noticed that only one of my GPUs is being used. That said, the V-Ray RT Active Shade viewport that I showed you earlier 
takes full advantage of multiple GPUs. One cool thing about this GPU preview tool is you can use it to refine the look of your smoke and fire. You can adjust these curves and easily dial in the look here after, again, without having to render it and wait for the result. Well, this just about concludes this demo. We really think you'll like this system. And when you take into account the power that you're getting for the price, we think you'll agree. Please take a look at the details below for information on how to contact us and to request a quote. Thanks for watching.